Today, we have an update regarding those Jackson Merrill baseball cards that were found unsigned in a trash compactor. We do have a resolution. I'm going to get to that in a second, but before I do, I want to give you guys a quick recap as to what went down. Now, you guys may recall that a few weeks ago, we spoke to the fact that a stack, well, not a stack, but basically every Jackson Merrill Immaculate Baseball card was found in a trash compactor at an apartment complex, unsigned, with the pens, with the stickers, with everything and anything that people could have taken this information with, taken these cards, and done a lot of damage to the, you know, the hobby on the secondary market, right? Taken advantage of a lot of unsuspecting buyers. Now, it was interesting because, like I said, these were found in a trash compactor, and it wasn't just one, it was sort of every card, as you can sort of see here in the photos themselves. It's, it's essentially stacks and stacks of them, and there's more photos within the thread itself, but it was just a very interesting situation. We spoke about in the last video how it wasn't necessarily a big deal for the, you know, the cards themselves, because now that it was out in the market and people knew that this thread was made, people would be a little bit more wary of the fact that these cards may have been tampered with, may have been stolen, may not be genuine autos on them, right? There's question marks over there. The big issue that we spoke to last time was the fact that sticker sheets were in there as well, and upwards of three to 500 unsigned stickers were found. And we spoke about last time how that could do significant damage to the hobby, right? In the sense that people could print fake cards, which are getting, you know, better and better by the day. You go check out some of these websites, you know, in China as an example, and they're, they're essentially masterpiece clones. And what you could do in that instance is use one of these genuine stickers, sign a fake auto, try and use an auto pen, something, right? Do something elaborate and put it onto one of these fake cards. And then, you know, you're going to scam a suspecting victim and or unsuspecting victim, I should say which was, you know, the most alarming thing, right? Because we also didn't know, did any of these stickers get stolen, you know, before this sort of stuff was found? Now, what this user has since updated us all on in the last two weeks is the fact that he's now been in touch with Panini and has managed to return them all. Panini has given him some form of compensation. We don't know exactly what that is, but at least this guy's done the right thing and tried to try to get these cards back to Panini, which they now are which is a obviously a really good outcome for the hobby, given the risks that I just talked to. But, you know, what I find to be the most alarming thing that I talked to last time, aside from the stickers, is the fact that Panini could allow this to happen in the first place. Like I talked to last time, there was a letter in there that basically specified when Panini needed to have these cards returned to them by Jackson or by his, you know, agent, right? Whoever's facilitating it. And that was around 30 June. So the fact that you could go, you know, two, three months after that date and these things not only not be returned to Panini, but be thrown out by the player themselves, or so it looks like. Um, Panini didn't appear to do enough to find out what the heck went wrong. You'd like to think that if Panini had a deadline and the deadline didn't change and it's still what was specified on that document, that they would have tried to get in touch with the player, right? They would have tried to get in touch with the agent and figure out what went wrong. You know, by all reports, it wasn't Jackson who threw these out. Apparently it was a cleaner or something along those lines. But still, Panini, you've got a deadline, right? How can you sort of allow this sort of stuff to happen, especially where, you know, you've got a sticker sheet within there that could be doing significant damage to the hobby. Like, yes, some people will say, well, it's not Panini's fault in this instance. Well, I think it, it is their fault. I've talked to this last time as well. These manufacturers use, you know, contractors to oversee these signing sessions. Like, you need to treat the process with a bit more respect, Panini tops, because tops also have the same issue. Like, we talked to tops with also their baseball cards, right, where you had cards get backdoored and it looks like those cards were stolen by the person overseeing the signing session. It's like this stuff's happening, but you guys aren't showing the respect, right? You aren't treating it like you should. These cards are now very expensive compared to what they used to be. That's going to be something that annoys people because I say that all the time, right? But this stuff isn't cheap and you need to, you know, make sure that the people overseeing this sort of stuff are number one, getting compensated to, to oversee the things they're now handling, right? Because when you look at the risk versus reward system, if they're not getting paid very much, and the cards are worth what they are, what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna backdoor a few, or they're gonna steal a few, or instances like this, not to take not take the, the process super seriously and then allow the cards to sort of get thrown away. Now, even if it wasn't the athlete's fault or the person overseeing its fault, the process needs to be treated with more respect, right? I, I, I like to think that the, the likes of these manufacturers need to be sending someone that's an officially an employee of theirs to oversee this sort of stuff or organize signing session days, something, right? Because Stuff like this is clearly not working, and you sort of hear stories like this every now and then, right? It's becoming a little bit more frequent, especially with, with tops and some of the issues they've had. This is nothing new, right? Because we've seen these issues come to light over decades, right? But it's just, 
one that you know really concerns me because of the damage that could have been done, right? Some of these cards could have been backdoored. What if this person didn't show up on social media and say that he found them? Like eventually Panini would click onto the fact that they never got returned because they are a redemption in the product, right? I should have opened with that. But this guy, you know, could have signed one or two and just drip fed them into the hobby. He could have taken a sticker sheet, right? How did we know that every sticker sheet was returned? Or if he didn't make the post in the first place, he could have drip fed, you know, fake autos out there into the public eye as well, or sold them to somebody that could have done a lot of damage with them as well. It's just one of those things that, you know, never ceases to amaze me within this hobby how, about how these, you know, manufacturers and businesses just drop the ball like this, right? So I'm really keen to hear what you guys have to say. I don't want to repeat myself now because I've talked to this topic so many times. It's just... It's just frustrating that this sort of stuff happens. It's just very amateur, right? You hear Sports Card Radio talk all the time about, you know, the value in the customer service that you get when you go to places like Louis Vuitton, right? Colin's always talking about that. Or, you know, when you go to a Rolex AD and you've got a good, good customer relationship with them and they're look, sort of looking after you, right? And yes, they're different services to a trading card manufacturer, but the fact that, you know, these guys want to set prices on these boxes and, and elevate the hobby to this new this new place and they're, allowing amateur mistakes like this to happen. It's like, this is something that should never happen. Like it should literally never happen. Yet it does. And it happens, you know, almost once or twice or three times a quarter, right? You hear stories like this all the freaking time. So it's like, what are they actually doing to make sure crap like this doesn't happen again? And for those of you that are going to be Panini haters, like I, I mentioned, Tops have the same issue. When it comes to those Tops Chrome baseball cards that were stolen six months before the product got released, right? I say that all the time. They were stolen six months before the product came out and they were being listed on eBay six months before the product came out. And there's people out there that are tracking these hits in the product and the players that went missing are not showing up in the product, which means Tops didn't replace them, which means Tops has gaps within their checklist and they've not updated or told anyone about it. So it's not just the fact that this shit is getting stolen. It's also the fact that these manufacturers either don't know this stuff is missing and it's got stolen and they haven't updated their product or they know it, but they don't actually care and they want to rip you off as a customer. That's basically what we're dealing with in stuff like this. It's just these businesses absolutely treating us as customers with disdain. They want to charge us all the money in the world, but they don't want to put the effort in to justify the money they're now making. I talk to these points all the time and you guys are sick of it, most likely, but it's just annoying. So I'm sort of happy, I'm very happy, I should say, that this was got given back to Panini, right? That's a very positive outcome for the hobby. I just hope that, you know, everything that was in that box, every sticker sheet was also returned, right? And I hope Panini has a way to monitor that because if they don't, then we might see some stuff out there in the wild that is, um, is fake. So like I said, please share your thoughts down in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.